Today we'll take a look at a continuation to uh, the video I talked about uh, the reference of an array. Um, I want to clarify a few things and take a look at the memory structure that we're seeing whenever we're working with um, arrays. So to start off, I'm gonna actually have here a simple array of integers. And what I want is to create a function that just prints out every single integer. So that should be simple. First, we have to define the signature. I'm gonna say, let's say print uh, array, and I'm gonna get here an int pointer as our array. And then I want a size t as the number of elements, right? Num, just num. And then some simple code here. All right, so just have a simple for loop over the array that goes up until num, right? This should be very simple for you to understand at this point. So if I try to call this function, I can say print array uh, and I can pass in here the array because even though this is an array type, it's going to decay into a pointer because as I've said in the previous video, arrays decay into a pointers whenever they are passed uh, to a function, right? So it makes sense that uh, this uh, array type decays to a pointer type. So you can just pass in it like so, and then we can say, okay, how many do we need? We need three in this case. We just have three numbers. If we try to run this, you'll notice I get all three numbers on the screen. So that makes sense. We had 5, 22, and 17. 5, 22, and 17. No, no problem there. Now let's see for a second that, well, we only have just one integer. Just one single integer right here. And say, instead of our int array, we just have uh, int, um, I don't know, element equals, let's say, 22. And that's all we want to print on the screen. Can we, can we pass something to this function so that we print just that number on the screen? Well, if we take a look at the signature, you might notice that, yes, this is actually possible. What, what should we pass in as the, as the number first? The number of elements, well, it's gonna be just one because we want to print out just this element. But as the, as the array, we're gonna just pass in the reference to that element because if we pass in the reference to that element, you'll notice we're gonna do R of I. But in our case, R of I is R of zero, right? We're just gonna have to do R of zero. But that's equivalent to dereferencing R. That's exactly the same thing. So dereferencing R, which we know it's a reference to our element, is going to give us, well, the element. So we can then just pass in a reference to our element as if it was an array of just one element. And it makes sense because it's a pointer to uh, a place in memory where resides just one integer, right? And then just pass in one as the number. And if we try to run this, it's going to work. We're going to get 22. So that's very nice. You can do this if you have uh, to use a function from an API that requires you to pass in an array of elements, but you only have just one there. So that's, that's quite useful. So we know that this works with integers. You can just pass in a reference to just one single int and one as the number, and we're gonna print that on the screen. That works nicely. Now let's try to do the same thing with strings. To start off, let's change this function so that it's compatible with strings. I'm gonna say, well, then the type of the number is going to be the same, right? We're not gonna change that, but here, Instead of an int, we need a something that represents a string. What represents a string in C? That's a, uh, well, an array of characters, but to pass it to a function, we need a uh, character pointer. So it's going to be a double pointer to char because if we dereference it once, we're gonna end up with a pointer to char, which is pointing to literally the beginning of the string and it's going to end with a null terminator at some point, right? So we don't need to pass in, well, an array of uh, numbers that represent the size of each string. Fair enough. So when we're dereferencing this, it should work nicely. We just need to change this to a percentile. Cool. 
Now let's change up the example here so that I have an array of strings really. I'm gonna say here char pointer array. I'm gonna actually add in here a few strings that say just like so. So we have three strings here. And remember these are not actually stored in the stack. We are storing them in the well in the read-only memory for strings. But we have an array of character pointers that point to a place in memory that just stores character after character. Fair enough, right? In memory this, how does this look like? If this was the beginning of the stack, for example, right? I'm gonna say here, begin stack. And we probably have some other things in between that and our array, but let's say um, we get here the array. And if we get to the array, uh, what, do, what are we storing here exactly? We're just storing pointers to strings. So I'm going to say here we have an 8 byte place in memory that stores a char pointer. That goes to read on, that goes to the read only memory for where these strings are actually located. So we're not actually storing them inside our stack. <clears throat> so that would be array of zero, right? And the same thing for the third, for the second and third one. And we might have some other things and then that's the end of the stack. So that's how the stack would look like in our example. Now let's try and pass this array to our print array function. So if I, I can remove this already, I can say here the array itself and we have three elements. Now, why can I pass in here the array? That's because this is an array to pointers to char, right? But because it's an array, it can decay to a pointer of the same type, right? So an array to pointers to char is going to decay to a pointer to pointers to char, right? Which is what we passed in here. So that's correct. Again, the type is fine. We are passing it as a um, function argument, so it should work. And we pass in here three, that should also work. So if I try to run this, you'll notice I get all three strings on the screen. Now, one of the most important things is, can we do the same trick that we did with our single element? So that if we just have one single string, can we pass something to that to that function so that it's just going to um, print out that one single string without us creating another array. So what do I mean here? If we have here just char pointer element, example string, it can be also a char array, but I'm going to use the same type here, right? So it's just going to be a char pointer. Again, inside our stack, we're only going to get one single pointer to this string. I'm gonna comment on this, we don't need it anymore. And then what? We're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna get uh, the reference to the LM, right? As we did before. And I'm gonna pass in one here because we only have one string there. If we dereference it once, we should get to this guy, which is a pointer to a, uh, basically a set of characters, right? And then if we dereference it again, you're gonna get the first character, the second, the third, and so on. So if I try to run this, you'll notice this works. This in fact works for strings, that's fine. But the issue becomes obvious when we're dealing with arrays. If instead I do here this, which is valid in our case, we get basically an array of characters declared here on the stack. What happens if I try to run this? It doesn't work. We are getting an error. This doesn't work. Why? Well, we have to think about what is in the uh, stack at, the, at this point. We have an, uh, an array, right? We have an array that has, well, a predefined amount of characters. We can say here 16, that's no problem. Um, <clears throat> but how, how is this in memory? This is directly on the stack. So we have a set of 16 characters on our stack, which is something like this. We have one byte, which is a char 
that really stores the value e and then we have another byte that is another char that stores the value x and another byte that stores the and so on and so forth right so <clears throat> you're going to get here an example string directly on the stack cool but when you're passing in a lamb what are you actually passing well you're really this this guy here this uh e here really has a reference has a place in memory and when you're doing this you're actually right it decays into a pointer to basically the first element of that array so it's similar as doing something like this but why did it actually crash well what we did was say reference of lm and that well that as we learned before all it does is give us the same value as just lm and since we don't care about the type because it's always going to be a double pointer to char well this and this are the same thing you might think that okay well if lm is actually the reference to lm of zero then reference to lm would be double reference to lm of zero but i don't know if i try yeah if i try to run this it's not gonna even uh pass compilation but if you think about it a double reference does not make any sense why because sure this guy has an address right it's a value it's a number that represents where this guy is placed in memory getting the reference of that address that is a number it's not a it's not actually a variable it's not stored anywhere this doesn't make any sense it's like getting the reference of the value one mm -mm, that doesn't work right this is a value this is an actual value that doesn't really have a place in memory you're not storing it anywhere you're just passing it to the function sure you might be storing it in the cpu registers but that's another story it's not a variable inside our memory therefore what can we do here if this doesn't work if this doesn't work if this doesn't work can we actually pass this as just one thing without doing anything else now what we have to do here is actually store that reference somewhere right when we think about this well we have to think about this being somewhere well we can actually do that we can actually create a variable a char pointer let's say ref equals this now when we get the address of this reference think about what happens well this guy what's this guy this guy is a value it's a memory address to what to this memory address which is another memory address right we have here basically in a sense this at ref points to ref really but ref also points to something which is our lm of zero so when you're dereferencing this once remember i is going to be zero so it's so it's going to be this so it's going to be this when you're dereferencing this once you're going to end up with the actual uh memory address of our string so when we try to run this you'll notice we get the example string on the screen and we can actually print out the uh, values these guys have so we can say here printf percent p so this is going to be um let's say here at ref right so this is what at ref is and then just print out here at ref and same thing with just the value of ref and now you'll notice that these guys are different right we get here at ref so the place in memory where the pointer to that array is stored is this guy 
and then the place in memory where the actual string is stored is this guy. So they are different. So when you're data referencing one, you're going to end up with the other one. And then when you're data referencing it a second time, I'm going to end up with a character. So what should we take from all this? The main thing to take from all this is um, that arrays are a contiguous place in memory where we store multiples of the same type. In our case, it was just a character, just 16 characters really. And the key thing is sure, this array does have a reference, but it doesn't have a place where we're actually storing that reference. So getting the reference of an array, that's why it just is the array. That's why ampersand lm just kind that just is the same thing as lm because there's no place in memory where we're storing this reference to actually get a reference of uh, that pointer to our array. We have to do that ourselves, like I did in here. That's the only way for arrays. <clears throat> Remember with pointers, when we had here a pointer, this worked. This worked because in the stack, all we had was really just eight bytes which represented a pointer to a character that uh, really pointed to this example string, right? And these eight bytes are somewhere, are actually a variable. So you can take a reference, another value that represents the place in memory that we stored this, these eight bytes. So I hope this clarifies a few things uh, for you. Whenever you're gonna have to use an, a function that sort of accepts multiple of the same type, like we have here, you just have to take into consideration that are you working with arrays or are you working with pointers? If you're working with pointers, like I did here, this works, right? You can say, um, you can get the array, the reference of the element. And then if I try to run, this is going to work, right? We get example string on the screen. But if you're working with actual arrays, all your storing is, the, is literally the array inside your stack. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope this kind of made you realize what's happening behind the scenes with the arrays and why a reference to that array doesn't really make any sense. And well, if you have any questions, do please them leave down, them down in the comments below or on our Discord server, because this was a pretty difficult topic to sort of explain. And I hope you understood. Thank you guys so much for watching and take care. See you next time.